So how do I select the right insurance company? Specifically, when I'm looking at a high cash value life insurance policy, trying to optimize the cash value because that is an asset on my balance sheet. Either I just want to position money in a safe, liquid, tax-free area to grow over time, or I want access to the capital to use for opportunities. Whatever my plans are, what company do I select? Because there are a lot of insurance companies out there. I frequently talk about the big four or the four major mutual companies, which are Mass Mutual, Guardian, New York Life, and Northwestern Mutual. These companies are really the cream of the crop, in my opinion. And the reason why is when you look at them, we're gonna talk about this a little bit more throughout this video. When you look at them, they have consistently delivered strong actual cash value performance to their consumers. Not projections, not great looking dividends on, it, on their dividend history sheet and then under delivered strong actual cash values. And we, we validated that several times through historical policies. It was really my time where I got to design policies for corporations, executive benefit planning. We just set up a policy for a bank in 2020. The two carriers selected were Mass Mutual and Guardian. They're looking at a, another purchase in 2021. Three companies selected this time. This is a bank, so a bank owned life insurance product, Mass Mutual, Guardian, and New York Life. Northwestern has a stellar product as well when it comes to bank owned life insurance. However, they do not work with independent brokers. They're exclusive to their career agent sales force only. Anyway, my point is, is when you look at ultra wealthy individuals, banks that have a lot of money, corporations, it is very, very common to see them use these companies. And the reason why is when you, again, look at the actual results that have lived the test of time, we see that performance there. Now there's more to it, which we're gonna get into. Let's touch on some bullet points here first. So with these big four, mutu <laughs> big four mutual companies, dividend rates are as follows for 2021. You've got Mass Mutual at 6%, Guardian at 5.65%, New York Life at 5.8%, and Northwestern Mutual at 5%. Here's the thing with the dividend rate. Those adjust over time. Each year, it's not uncommon to see that dividend move up or down a little bit each year. In my opinion, one should never purchase a policy based off of a company's present dividend rate. The reason why is that dividend rate changes over time. In addition to that, other factors impact my actual policy performance. I've got insurance expenses, mortality charges, there's other factors in there. So when I look at cash value life insurance products, with the major mutual companies, here's the big piece here. If the policy is designed properly, all things being equal, similar product, minimum premium, maximum POA allocation to beef up my cash value, and I'm paying the same dollar amount into one of these products with one of these companies, I can close my eyes, pick one of them out of a hat, and I can't go wrong. They all go back and forth with each other. Hard to go wrong. So. What helps one refine their decision-making process? Well, there's factors that go into it. One popular topic that comes up quite a bit is non-direct and direct recognition. If I look at these three carriers, Mass Mutual is a non-direct recognition company, primarily. They do have a direct recognition contract available. If I select their fixed loan rate, I can have a direct recognition policy. Guardian is a direct recognition contract, but I have the option to flip over to non-direct recognition as time passes. New York Life is only non-direct recognition and Northwestern Mutual is direct recognition. Now, if you are familiar at all with direct recognition, typically we hear that it is bad. Don't go that way because a company can lower your dividend rate when you borrow from the product. The thing is, when you look at the major mutual companies, the three companies, so Mass Mutual does offer direct recognition, and then Guardian and Northwestern Mutual do as well. With their direct recognition contracts, they presently, and they've done this for several years, about 10 years since the low interest rate environment started that we've been in for, for 10 years now, actually longer. When I borrow from that product, they raise the dividend rate on borrowed funds. And we've got more information on that on other videos. Check out any of our non-direct versus direct recognition videos or all about Mass Mutual or all about Guardian where we really go into detail there. 
And if you're an agent looking for the ins and outs of all of this, our Agent Academy ILS provides all of the detail on how to design products with these carriers as well. Two of them, I should say, in our program. So four major mutual companies. If you're in the market looking for a maximum cash value life insurance policy, these carriers have always delivered. Not to say small carriers have not. This is not an attack or a, a disparaging video towards small companies. We've seen it with these guys. That's why I'm sold on them. So what will help one refine their decision-making process? Or what helps me weigh my decision-making? Financial ratings. I want a company that is well-rated and has consistently not just paid a dividend, but paid strong net internal rates of return, actual performance on cash value and death benefit over time through the 2008, 2008s, recessions, down years, whole life insurance products just keep going up over time. If, if, if it is designed properly. So financial ratings, stellar, cream the crop with all four. If you look at their Comdex scale, which is almost a grade that takes the different rating carriers out there, like Standard & Poor, AM Best, Moody's, and the other financial organizations, their Comdex score, score, each of these four carriers, fall between a 98 and 100, 100 being the highest. Company size, are all are massive. Guardian is smaller compared to the other three, but when you look at their size as a whole, these companies are massive, especially compared to other mutual life insurance companies. If you throw stock companies in the mix, then you have some big ones out there, like Prudential, for example. Here's the big, big selling point though, actual performance. I am so big on this because this is never talked about in the industry, among agents, among consumers, like it's not, and it is one of the most important things. When we would design policies, and we talk about it with everyone, but when I would design policies for corporations, this came up so much. Not projections and illustrations what numbers look the best with a certain company right now, because then everyone would just pick the company with the highest dividend rate, but actual performance as time has passed, who's actually delivered? These four have, we've seen it. So if you're ever looking at different companies, I do not want to see dividend history. I do not want to see an illustration that just shows the best numbers, real performance. So we have studies of this. If you've worked with us or are working with us, you may have seen this before, our historical study playlist. We've got a library of different case studies uh, dating as far back to policies issued in 1975. We have several that were issued a little bit after 2010, 2013, 14, 15, where now we're getting, those are more recent, but the ones that we actually put in force, we're seeing the actual performance. But we've got policies from, again, as far back as 1975, couple from the 1980s, a handful from the 1990s. And how we obtained these actually, a little bit from the insurance carriers themselves, but a lot of people we've worked with have been kind enough to provide copies of their policy where we were able to track their cost basis, the original illustration, what they actually paid in, and then not just look at the dividends paid over time, how much did I pay in and what was my net cash value performance over time? Like that's it. That's what people are interested in to ensure that they have the absolute most amount of money, maximum cash value, and then if my goal is to use it for other investments, use it for retirement, whatever it might be, I've got the most operating ca capital. Getting too excited here. So with the four major mutuals, our historical studies have consistently demonstrated net internal rate of returns between four and 6%. The highest I've seen was that policy issued in 1975, which displayed a net IRR of a little over 7%. Yet I'm not expecting to see that today with the low dividend environment we're in right now. Three and a half to five and a half percent. Great way to set expectations because we're likely going to be in a low dividend environment for some time. This is at least what these carriers have expressed to me as I've engaged with them. So what I wanna look at, actual performance, not dividend history, not illustrations. I want the good stuff. All right, so if I'm a consumer, which one do I select? Because four companies is still a lot to choose from. What will help me refine my decision-making process? Well, several factors will here. What we've got, policy design, 
flexibility, funding period, and then the agent, the firm. Who am I working with? That's very important here. So let's go through these. Policy design, we talk about this frequently. When I look at policy design, where can my money go? The premium or the PUA component. Premium dollars, first and foremost, buy me a death benefit and then eventually build cash value. So if, you, if you've ever seen a whole life insurance illustration, if I have a 100% base premium product, what that means is I'm paying dollars in, you'll often see zero cash value in the first and sometimes first and second year with a traditional policy with all premium. The reason why is the company overcharges me for the death benefit up front, and then eventually that money starts coming back to cash value. People usually look at those options and say like, why would I do this? There are other things I can do with my money in the meantime, especially if I'm a business owner, because I can reinvest it in myself and keep things going. So premium dollars, death benefit first, and then eventually build cash value over time. Where PUA dollars, I'll refer to this often as a cash dump in, because I can pop them right into cash value. They do purchase me some death benefit, but when you look at individuals and companies who utilize cash value as an asset on their balance sheet, whether they're looking at it as an alternative fixed asset, they want to use it for a retirement vehicle, the banking concept, whatever it might be, they are maximizing this rider because that optimizes their cash value short term and long term and gives them more money. Working capital, not money when I die. It often gives you more death benefit over the long haul as well. Less up front, but more over the long haul. But this is the key to optimizing the cash value. You'll see with these companies, they're all a little bit different, but typically the lowest I can drive that premium is about 10%, some a little bit lower. And again, we've got more specific detail on that. Mass Mutual is a clean 10%. Guardian you can push down to about 9%, 9.1 to be precise. And some smaller companies, not on this list, don't have a minimum. So could be advantageous there. But that's where it's good to be aware of what companies, what specific rules do they allow. That way when I pay a dollar into the product, I know I've got the best possible product set up. So the lower I can drive that premium, the more, more money I can allocate towards that PUA component. If you look at a bank-owned life insurance product, it functions a lot like a large PUA deposit, which is really interesting. So, what helps me refine my decision-making process? Policy design. Guess what? You can design a policy with a minimum premium and a maximum PUA allocation with all of those carriers. So, <laughs> that helps, but you can do a lot of consist have a lot of consistencies there. If I am designing a policy, and I'm laser focused on the guarantees, I'll let you know these guys right now, before the new update in the industry, I'm curious to see how that impacts it, they've got favorable guarantees if I'm looking at a short funding period. So if I wanna fund, max fund a policy, something like 10 years or less, and perhaps still pay a moderate amount thereafter but not max fund it, you can do a lot of damage. Where we've seen guaranteed cash values, have a positive internal rate of return between years five and six. That's an absolute worst case scenario environment, only guarantees. None of these companies have operated in a guaranteed environment for the past 150 years. Like they haven't done it. They know what they're doing with their money. But that's just a quick tip there with the guarantees. Let's progress back on to this. Flexibility. This is it right here. What's going to help me refine my decision-making process? This one's it. So my preference, who we typically use in our practice, are these guys, Mass Mutual and Guardian. We have used them, using them right now, on a Boley product, and we look at them sometimes. New York Life, it's a, they're a solid company. Um, but when you look at the flexibility provisions, that's what I'm very, very big on. Because when I take a whole life insurance policy and look at the core benefits, safe, meaning no, no market risk, not tied to the market, liquid, 
I can access my money anytime, use it for opportunities, and tax-free, tax-free if I do everything right, don't trigger a mech, don't lapse it with a gain, nothing like that. So safe, liquid, tax-free. Take all of those benefits, people are attracted to cash value life insurance. The drawback is the premium, because I don't see that show up in cash value in the first year, so I wanna minimize that. The other drawback is it's an insurance policy. If you have a car insurance or auto insurance policy, how does that work? You pay a premium and you get a benefit. If something bad happens, that benefit's paid out. You can file a claim. With a life insurance policy, the something bad happen that happens is something none of us want to happen. <laughs> so flexibility. How do I take a boring life insurance bill and flip it into a flexible savings asset? So I've got a life insurance policy, I gotta pay this premium. If I die, something gets paid out, I don't want that. But we can use it as a flexible savings asset, set it up where I can commit to a minimal amount and add more funds at my discretion. For example, if I want the ability, I love this word, ability, I don't wanna be committed to a big bill. I want the ability to pay in $100,000 per year but again, I don't wanna get a bill for that. Well, looking at the policy design and flexibility, here's exactly what I could do. I could set my premium at $10,000 per year. Now I'm committed to that, and I have the ability to throw another $90,000 per year into the policy. Flexibility features. Guardian is a company that will just allow me to throw PUAs in at my discretion if we use the proper riders on the policy and it's set up right, if it's not set up right, you cannot throw in as aggressively as what I just illustrated there. Similar with Mass Mutual. They are a company that has several PUA riders. The most flexible, in my opinion, is the, the option where you can make payment adjustments without any medical underwriting one time per year on our anniversary date. So someone that has cash on hand or is very disciplined and says, hey, I'm good with a one time per year payment adjustment. Mass Mutual works beautifully for that. And this is where it's good to see different options and such. And we can go through the other carriers too. But flexibility, I want the ability to put in 100K per year, but maybe I just wanna to commit to 10 so it never feels like a burden and go up to 100. Hey, one of these guys will accommodate that quite nicely. If I want maximum flexibility, I'm probably gonna go with them. But again, this is where having that information up front helps me refine my decision-making process. How do I get the best company, top-tier quality, any of these four, and then how do I use it as a flexible savings asset so it doesn't feel like a bill? And then on the backside, how do I use it from a convenience factor, being able to borrow, repay, online portal, which they all invest a ton into technology. Funding period, this will certainly help refine my decision-making process. Am I in a position? where I want to pay into the policy as much money for as long as possible, or am I in a position where I say, you know what, maybe I want to pay but for, forever, but you know, I think I want to stop after 10 years. Maybe it's only five years. A lot of people who are 55, 60 years old say, you know what, I've got this big sum of money. I want to move that over to a cash value life insurance product. What's the most efficient time period? Maybe it's five years at that age. So they gradually move it over and then they're done. Like no more payments. They don't like the idea of it. They love to see their money continue to grow, have a death benefit, but they say, hey, like this is it. So we wanna show them options of how to do that. Some companies are very, very accommodating towards a limited pay scenario. My preference would be one, two, three, in that order. And then the agent firm, well this one, this is a personal preference, right? So I can't provide data on different agencies and firms out there other than our own. Um, and if you're an agent, we've got our coaching and training business, which we go through customer service, making the process as convenient as possible for a consumer. Full transparency, you gotta be transparent. I'm not gonna start going into a coaching spiel here. I'm talking too fast because I get so excited. I just had another espresso, that's why. But this is very important. You know, what happens so much in the insurance industry is often individuals purchase policies 
and then find out after the fact it could have been set up differently. It wasn't set up for maximum cash value and that's what they wanted. Or they purchase a policy, it's set up properly, but then their agent is no longer in the business. Something happened, they retired, um, didn't work out, whatever it might be, they are no longer in the business and now as the consumer, like it's not, if I'm a policy holder, it's not my job to remember every single detail with my product. Like that's why we have financial professionals and agents and companies like mine to help. Like that is our job, that's why the insurance companies pay us. So we wanna make sure we do that appropriately and really service the individual ongoing. You know, our process is to reach out to everyone every six months, provide updated material, and offer a review call or review meeting. <clears throat> Whether it's with me, with one of our agents, we've got a large agent force, uh, some that have been here for a while and are very, very sharp, very good at what they do, and then new ones, which we have systems and senior agents to complement them to get anyone up and running. But if you work with our agent, one of our agents or firm, you get more than just one person from start to finish. So that doesn't have much to do with the major mutuals other than we prefer them and recommend them. But in any event, a lot of information here. I hope that you found it helpful. If you have questions or would like more information, reach out anytime. And as always, I hope this helps. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.